the previous examples that we've looked at have all dealt with discrete variables. Discrete variables are variables in which the outcomes are countable. So for instance, when we're flipping a coin, you either get heads or tails. There's nothing in between. If we're looking at selecting people at random from a group, we're either going to select six people or seven people. There's nothing in between. Um, it is possible there could be an infinite number of num possibilities, but those numbers are countable. So typically meaning all of the different outcomes are whole numbers or numbers we could realistically count up to. We'll also encounter continuous variables, meaning we can't list all the possible outcomes. So this gets into things like if we're taking measurements. Something could be three inches long or four inches long, or it could be somewhere in between. It could be three and a half inches. But then there's another measurement between three and three and a half inches. There's always some number in between. So it's impossible to list or describe all those different outcomes by writing out the individual numbers. So instead, we're going to represent continuous distributions with curves or with graphs. These probability density curves, as they're sometimes referred to, can have a few different types of shapes. So one shape is a symmetric unimodal distribution. This would be referred to as the normal curve or the bell curve. But again, its shape is symmetric and unimodal. We could have a skewed distribution, which could either be skewed left or skewed right. Or we could have what's called a uniform distribution meaning all the frequencies or the likelihood of all of the different outcomes are exactly the same. So no matter what different outcome we're considering, basically they all have these equally likely probabilities, equally likely outcomes of occurring. To calculate probabilities with these types of curves or with these graphs, what we'll be doing is calculating the area under the curve. And to keep, something to keep in mind is that the total area under the curve is always 1, because the area beneath the curve represents all possible probabilities. So if we took the probability of any outcome occurring, that would have to be 100%. That's our maximum probability. So in our last example, Eric wants to go skiing tomorrow, but only if there are 3 inches of snow or more, uh, 3 inches or more of new snow. According to the weather report, any amount of new snow between 1 inch and 6 inches is going to be equally likely, and the probability density curve is provided below. We want to find the probability that the new snow depth will be 3 inches or more, meaning he'll go skiing tomorrow. We want to shade the appropriate area and then calculate its numerical value to find the probability. So he's going to go skiing if the total amount of new snow is 3 inches or more. So our x-axis represents those different possible outcomes. So starting at 3 inches, he's interested in anything from 3 inches up to 6 inches, according to the forecast, is the maximum possible amount we're going to see. So this shaded area, this region under the curve, represents the probability that he's going to go skiing tomorrow, that there will be enough new snow. So the probability that he will go skiing, or the probability that there will be enough snow, is found by calculating this area, which for this uniform distribution is just a rectangle. So the width of this rectangle is a distance from 3 to 6. So we have a width of 3 and a height of 0 0.2. So we can calculate the probability as 3 times 0 0.2 or 0 0.6. So there's a 60% chance there will be enough new snow, 
and he'll go skiing tomorrow. In part B, we want to find the probability that he won't go skiing. So not skiing is, again, the complement of skiing. So one way to calculate this would be to find the complement. So we take 1 minus the probability that he does go skiing. So 1 minus 0 0.6 or 0 0.4, 40%. The other way would be to look back at this probability density curve again. He won't go skiing if it rain, if it snows between 1 and 3 inches, so up to but not quite including 3 inches, meaning this area under the curve represents the probability that he won't go skiing. So we still have a height of 0 0.2, and in this case, a width of 2. So we could also calculate this as 0 0.2 times 2, to get 0.4 or 40%. So whichever way we calculate that, using that rule that we established for complements, or going back to the graph and recalculating that probability, we come up with the same result. He has a 60% chance of going skiing, a 40% chance of not going skiing.